oxalate may contribute toward bladder pain, interstitial cystitis by causing local irritation and inflammation. They can adhere to tissue and essentially bind with epithelial cells where they cause stress and potentially deplete local immunity. Oxalate can also act as a house for certain bacteria, including E. coli. E. coli have been shown to selectively aggregate in and around calcium oxalate crystals, and this may therefore theoretically implicate calcium oxalate in chronic urinary tract infections, which are unresponsive to antibiotic treatment. We've been looking at how oxalate can have many different detrimental effects on the human body. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of anecdotal reports of people who have seen major benefits in chronic urinary tract infections, bladder pain, um, interstitial cystitis, or even just frequent urination when they go on a low oxalate diet. Many testimonials have actually been made available over on the Trying Low Oxalates group on Facebook, which is run by Susan Owens. When we look at how the body deals with oxalate, oxalate is absorbed into the bloodstream and it goes to the kidneys. And when it gets to the kidneys, ideally it's meant to go out through the kidneys into the bladder and then be passed through the urine via the urinary tract. Now you can have oxalate crystals which become deposited in the kidney, but you can also have oxalate crystals which actually deposit in the bladder as well, and these are called bladder calculi. Now most bladder calculi are um, made up of uric acid, but there is also a small portion which is made up of calcium oxalate. So just to be clear, calcium oxalate is not only implicated in kidney stones, but those oxalate crystals can actually make their way to other parts of the urinary tract. They can get into the bladder. Now, calcium oxalate crystals have the uncanny ability to adhere to epithelial cells. And epithelial cells are what line the bladder and the mucous membranes. We know that when calcium oxalate adheres to a tissue or when it binds to a tissue or becomes deposited, it causes inflammation, it causes oxidative stress, it causes irritation. It's therefore possible that the bladder pain and irritation experienced in something like interstitial cystitis could very well be caused by oxalate crystal adhesion to the epithelial tissue lining the bladder. In fact, I've had a few clients who've presented with this and saw benefit almost immediately when reducing oxalate in the diet and actually providing some supporting nutrients such as magnesium citrate. In the context of chronic urinary tract infections, I believe it's of critical importance to examine the health of the tissue which aligns the urinary tract. This is essentially because if the tissue is healthy, then it's probably not gonna be a very hospitable environment for bacteria to thrive in. So if there is a chronic urinary tract infection, we need to be looking at why the environment is allowing that to happen. Examine the health of the mucous membranes. Is there sufficient immunoglobulin A being secreted, um, which is essentially a, an immune cell, which is responsible for battling that kind of infection? Likewise, are there any chronic stresses local to that tissue, which are essentially depleting the resources and compromising local immunity? annotated, and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.